Good morning. Welcome back to Fujitsu Forum TV, where we continue to bring you live and exclusive coverage from Fujitsu Forum 2018. By the time we come off air, somewhere around about 4.45 this afternoon, we will have brought you 27 live interviews and broadcast three live keynotes. One of those keynotes this afternoon at 12 o'clock is with Dr. Joseph Rieger, where he's addressing us on uh, exploring blockchain technology. But we're too impatient to wait till this afternoon. So joining us is Dr. Joseph Rieger and Frederick Debrook. We're going to jump straight into the, uh, the blockchain conversation. Dr. Joseph... Blockchain is still mostly linked to cryptocurrencies, but I understand that it has far wider ranging potential applications. Can you help us understand where it, where it can be applied? Well, I'm really glad you're saying that because I think it does, um, the uh, cryptocurrency issue is a misservice to all the other uh, really exciting applications of uh, blockchain. And in fact, in my keynote, I will try to do the whole thing essentially without cryptocurrencies. The industrial applications, essentially in all parts of the industry, are much more relevant. And depending on um, uh, you know what industry are, uh, you are looking at, you can find different um, different jobs for blockchain that it can do well. Uh, this is not saying that blockchain is applicable for everything, but in the area of healthcare, in the area of industrial production, and my favorite hobby horse in the area of public sector administration, blockchain can be tremendously helpful. What's, what's driving this? What are the broader trends and, and, and challenges that blockchain um, uniquely solves for customers? So, uh, Frederick can uh, jump in on this one, uh, but uh, I just like to uh, say that air, oh, as the world is moving to more and more globally interconnected, hyperconnected uh, trade and essentially life in the internet, uh, essentially all industries will need some kind of a trustworthy, immutable, secure data store uh, that can be uh, used for not just trade but all other interactions in life uh, where we can be certain that certain facts hold true. And and certain things did happen and certain transactions are recorded properly properly uh, and therefore I actually don't see any limitations uh, uh, to it uh, to what to use it for yeah absolutely uh, I think as a primary use is not in the cryptocurrency for us in the enterprise we're looking at the applicability of certain elements to specific business cases in multiple industries today including finance, settlement, and all these things, but it's also applicable, for example, in notary, contractual law, assurance, and, of course, in government, uh, as Dr. Reger said, that's a, a domain where it's a very, very valid use case you can find. Of course, for us, it's very important to find that ROI today already for customers because it, it still scares a bit customers today. If you look at blockchain, it, it typically associated still with Bitcoin, but there is much more in there, like the immutability, like the, you know to want to know who does what when, uh, the timestamping, anything that becomes a transaction in this modern world where you b want to bring trust in an untrusted world. That's where blockchain and ledger technology, because we prefer ledger technology as term, um, because that connotation is still there. That's where we see the application areas. You both mentioned public sector. Which industries do we think are going to benefit the most from blockchain innovations? Well, I wanna, yeah, I wanna, I will have a go at okay. that one. So I think there's a multiple domain of general use cases you can find across industries. For example, um, every industry has problems with invoices. Uh, we have developed already an application on a cloud native platform where we say, let's prove that an invoice is genuine before it's introduced in an SAP on a, or a CRM system. That's a case that is common across all industries, but you will also always find, for example, very specific areas, um, for example, the career path of a public servant. You can put that on a blockchain so that it's immutable, proven that that person has that path in the career. These are sort of the kind of applications we find all over. Let me bring another aspect into this one. Uh, in fact, it, uh, the answer to this question depends very much on the region where you're asking it. Uh, the, we are talking here in Munich, Germany. Uh, Germany is an industrial nation with lots of industrial production. Uh, in this country, one of the primary use cases for blockchain is the applicability of blockchain uh, in various areas of manufacturing, uh, supply chain management, asset management, and tracking 
checking uh, the materials that are being used, whether they are hazardous materials, whether they are uh, conflict materials, and so on. In other countries, like in the United Kingdom, uh, other applications uh, are more important, such as finance industry, uh, retail. But as Reading uh, m mentioned, the public sector uh, seems to be essentially in all European countries very similar. And because of that, uh, uh, the blockchain properties and in particular the automation capabilities that are available in blockchain through the smart contracts are very much of interest essentially in any country. Yeah. The blockchain landscape is quite a fragmented one. Um, we know that there's different standards and implementations. How important is consistency and standardization going to be in the broader adoption? I think there you have a, we as Fujitsu have a big job to do is to make customers aware of that fragmentation of that landscape and it also comes with a, a number of risk because DLT is a technology that helps you to mitigate certain types of risk but um, that landscape is so diverse at this moment that you, for example, when building applications for customers, you want to move to a platform that has enterprise class features. And for example, for us at this moment in time, that's Hyperledger Fabric we're working a lot with. We're also looking at other platforms and investigating whether there are enterprise applicability. But we have developed kind of a framework to, to look at, okay, what makes a good blockchain project? Because actually, if you look at it, any blockchain project is 80% a business topic and 20% a technology topic. You will always have very particular blockchains that exist for a particular feature. And for example, you will have blockchains you can set up specifically for IoT. That's the kind of topics you can very much, certainly in the manufacturing, everything related to provenance and traceability, as, as Dr. Eger said, that's a very important topic. So we have to warn and we have to participate in bringing these standards to the market and to our customers. I'd like to have two aspects. Uh, the one of them is that uh, luckily, um, by f large, the, most of the blockchain development, uh, in particular Harper Ledger, happens in the open source domain. So open source plays a very important role in blockchain and open source developments always help to gravitate towards common standards and, and, and similar uh, ways of, uh, of using uh, the code. So that helps, but it's not sufficient. That's the other aspect I'd like to mention. And there needs to be some uh, serious effort, in particular, if we want uh, the penetration of blockchain technologies uh, in a, an entire industry, like a manufacturing industry, because then you will want, you will want to build value chains and supply chains with many participants and therefore you've got to offer the opportunity to uh, and, the, and, and the possibility to work together. Now here in Germany there's a federal agency for information security and that federal agency is working on a paper and I've seen the draft version of it uh, and that will call for uh, the country of Germany in this case but other countries are well advised to do something similar for some standards uh, that uh, um, companies are, um, can adhere to to provide uh, the immutability and the security and the interoperability aspects. Yes, and it is also about that data model you want to come make common across all these industries because how you need to have these ledgers being able to talk to each other and that's something what we see happening now in the market is a lot of that interconnectivity between these blockchains even and of course if you have a very unstable market of technology chains under there, you have to be very careful. And that's also one of the jobs we see as Fujitsu is watch out, there might be an issue there. Frederick, I'd like to end on Fujitsu's um, blockchain center of excellence. Okay. How is it benefiting customers? So what we do for customers is basically uh, we try to make them aware that it's a business topic huh? and we do that in different ways. We provide consulting and development services but we also provide a number of as a service offerings like invoice flow where we manage the flow of invoices. We also do document flow where we manage the flow of digital assets huh? and the one thing we also have is a kind of a speciality offerings where we have a proof of business where we're going to look at the enterprise ontology of, of, of such a, a solution for a business topic and that it's like a rapid prototyping in, in one week where we're going to say we're going to do a use case deep dive we're going to identify the business area where it's applicable do a rapid prototyping, minimum viable product, and in the end, we're going to decide after one week 
is this a good case or not? And then move to a big project of a re-implementation. Because for us, if you move now and you want to reap the benefits already of, of blockchain, you have to make sure you can integrate it in an existing landscape because uh, you look at the pure cryptocurrency world, they say, oh, we have to decentralize this, everything, and it has to be completely distributed. But companies and the adoption will only accelerate if you can prove the value, the ROI of something. So we believe that it's better to look at a certain specific scope, make sure that you have the benefits for that. If it's, uh, for example, uh, the publication of certificates or what, that kind of thing, the stuff that really needs to be immutable, identifiable. And I think there, we as a blockchain center can bring that benefit across uh, Europe and, and, and wider in the US and, and in Japan. So we work closely also with our Japanese colleagues on these topics. Dr. Joseph Riga, thank you very much. We promised you lots of insight here on Fujitsu Forum TV. This wasn't a rally cry for product or service. It was about servicing the key challenges that are impacting business and society. If that insight isn't helping boardrooms, I honestly don't know what will. Don't forget, we've got the keynote with Dr. Joseph Riga this afternoon at 12 p.m. You can see that live on Fujitsu Forum TV, so join us for that. We mentioned public sector then, didn't we? Public sector are up next. Now, British and German viewers, you might be shocked to hear that there's a European country that can deliver tax returns in just 18 seconds. Right now, Estonia is blazing a trail for digital transformation. They've 1.3 million citizens. The questions we're putting to the team is, well, why hasn't Germany followed suit with their 86 million citizens? If you're working in public sector and you want to understand digital transformation, this is an interview not to be missed. We'll be live at 10 o'clock this morning. Do join us for this. It's going to be a cracker. Stay with us.